So we're going to have us a little bit of chat uh, first, like uh, we want to know about you and just like uh, doing like ice breaking kind of the conversation. And after okay. that, we're going to do some like questions. Is that okay? Yes. Okay, perfect. So just to, like a like, casual talk. Um, so I, I'm, I'm going to just introduce myself and like, uh, uh, I'm living in Canada. Uh, is uh, I don't know if you know about the Canada, but the like, British Columbia uh, province. Uh yeah, and about the whole hour's drive from Vancouver. Yeah, and I've been here since uh, 2009 and work as a physio as well. Ah, so, yeah. Very nice. So, what made you? Well, to become the physio, uh, I had a kind of a choice like, uh, to go to the Australia or Canada, uh, but I picked the Canada because my wife is Canadian. Ah. <laughs> so maybe it may be easier for me to move to Canada. So. Yeah. I so, see, I see. So you are uh, in Singapore and you have a clinic in Singapore? Yes, yeah, so I started my clinic in 2016. Uh, okay. It's called okay. Performance Sports and Rehab Specialist and um, okay. working with my husband who's a bike fitter. So we do okay. the bike fit um, and he oh. does the bike and I do the clinical bike fits with him. Um, oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, so I actually have hired a bunch of uh, people like sports scientists and um, and uh, my husband being bike fitter. I teach Pilates. So we have a Ooh. team of different skill sets um, working with us and everyone is from a different background like Taka's from Japan and we have others that are trained in UK and New Zealand and Canada. Oh, yeah. We have Canada one as well. Oh really? Uh, yeah, she, she uh, studied in Alberta. Um, okay. And then there's me, I trained in New York. New York. Oh, that's yes. cool. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. going to uh, go a little bit more further to ask you more questions. But yeah, sure. that's cool. So your, uh, your husband is doing the bike fitting. So mm -hmm. does he do the, any like uh, the cycling or doing like, lots of like, uh, like so triathlon we, or anything? Yeah. Yeah. So we were living in the US for a very long time. And okay. I think that's where he started his love for cycling. I had okay. worked under a bike fitter myself who's also physio. And, okay. um, and so we did see a lot of uh, professional cyclists as mm. well coming to that clinic. Uh, my husband on his own at that time was doing bike fits in the garage. Um, oh so that very common kind of practice there, right? And um, okay. so then when we came here, we decided to do this. He used to cycle a lot. He used to, um, he used to cycle every day. Um, okay. He started off with marathons, but moved to cycling because of yeah. injuries. Okay. And um, yeah, so that's, that's why we started something like this. That, that's cool. And do you do any sports? How about you? So I love is tennis. Um, ah. And do Pilates to rehab myself from tennis. Okay. Um, so that would be my passion. Yeah, Pilates and tennis. That's cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, do you have any questions? Like, uh, otherwise, you know, I know you have a limited time. I'm yeah. thinking we got one hour. So, do you have any questions? And then uh, we're gonna jump on our questions. Or are you okay? We can get started. We're good. Okay. Hot sun, that's all right. Taka, are you okay? Ready to start? Uh, yeah. Uh, please call me Taka. Uh, Taka. People, okay. People in Singapore call me Alexa. Okay. Perfect. So we're gonna jump on a question now. Uh, first, um, I know some of you already heard from uh, Belinda, but uh, I want you to introduce yourself first. Uh, just like a brief introduction, please. So first, uh, Belinda, please. Yeah, so I am an owner of the Performance Sports and Rehab Specialist. I started the clinic 2016 together with my husband, who is the bike fitter. Um, he also does, he basically does the bike fits I do the clinical bike fits when it requires a little bit of medical opinion. Um, so together we started that 2016 in Singapore. We started at Scotts, then we moved to Novena where the medical hub is. Um, and now our team is growing and we have decided to pull in team members from different countries or trained in different countries. So most of them are Singaporeans, but trained in Canada, New Zealand, or UK and myself, New, New York. And then of course we were excited to have Taka from Japan, uh, bringing us a very different skill sets and different work ethics. Um, so we're very excited to have him. 
Thank you. Uh, so Taka now, uh, can you introduce yourself, please? Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Takayuki Hotta. Uh, please call me Taka. I'm working with Belinda as a senior physiotherapist since this January. Before coming here, I have worked uh, for six or seven years in Japan. Then I decided to come here. I'm very happy to have this good opportunity to uh, good opportunity tell our clinic and my career today. All right, thank you so much, Taka. Uh, so first, like I have a quick question, and is it common to find a Japanese physiotherapist working in uh, in Singapore? Maybe like a this question to uh, Belinda. Did he? So there is maybe one other therapist I know. Okay. Um, okay. Physical therapist in Singapore who's from Japan, but uh, they stay mostly in. Hello? Belinda, we cannot hear you now. Losing me? Can you hear me now? Yeah, now I can hear you. So can you start at the beginning? Yeah. Yes. So basically, I have not seen any Japanese physiotherapist in Singapore except one other um, mm -hmm. in a Japanese clinic, um, and they serve only Japanese clients. Mm. Okay. So, um, what's the, what made can, you, can, okay. Are you okay? Breaking up Belinda? a little bit, but I think we're okay. Good. Uh, can you hear me? Are you me? okay? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. But uh, like you were cut, cutting off before, so, yeah. I, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Good, perfect. So you only know the other other Japanese physiotherapists working in Singapore, other than other than Taka. Yeah, you said okay. There's just uh, one. Okay, yeah. just one. So, um, uh, what made you decide to hire Taka? So that's the main question. So it's very interesting how I met Taka. Taka okay. came for a holiday, and then he decided to see different meet different PTs and clinics. And um, so when I met him, I thought, you know, I'm still not, I was still a smaller clinic. I was mostly working on my own with one other therapist. Um, but I thought, you know, why don't I just start to build that database and see if there's good people coming through. Mm -hmm. And what was interesting was that someone came for a holiday and decided to look for a PT clinic. I think that's, <laughs> that says something about Taka, you know? <laughs> So when I brought him in, I decided to show him around. I talked to him a little bit, but then I decided, you know, maybe I should take, bring him in for an assessment. So usually all the therapists I hire, we go through a one or two hours um, assessment of skills. Okay. And so I, I call it, you know, let's just play around, right? So I didn't okay. want it to be very official or intimidating. So we did. And... Um, so I understood how Taka's skills were, and um, he showed me his resume, okay. and um, and I think we just left it as that. We never met again, okay. and mm. then he came back again, and um, okay. so, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he came back again, and this time um, he was starting to talk to me about let's have it. I'm gonna come for an internship, and I don't really even have an internship here, oh, but okay. this. So he's obviously very persistent and yeah, very, exactly, yeah. very persistent, hungry to learn a lot. And that's exactly some of the traits I'm looking for in people in my okay. clinic. Um, and what was very unusual was he's, you know, he's, he's so persistent. He, he put himself in my clinic for two weeks. He hung out with me um, to understand how we work. And so I think he gave me a chance to see what he really, who he really was, uh, okay. who he really is, and yeah. and we had more time to play around with skills, and that's why I, that's why I decided to hire him because I realized he, there was something special about his skills. I mean, he is still learning a lot, but I yeah. I could see there was an extra spark. Yeah, 
that's uh, how, yeah, I, I totally agree. Is uh, very persistent and uh, willing to learn <laughs> lots of things. And yeah, it's very unique. And now you're working uh, with him. Uh, what is the differences or what did you find that, um, you know, what he has and between what he has and normally, you know, like physiotherapists are working in the, like a Singaporean physiotherapist. What's the unique part of What's him? What's the unique feature? Yeah, um, yeah. Skill sets wise, yeah. there are, all the skills that he has are, are I, some of it I've never heard before even. Um, of course, during our first meeting, I, I shared with Taka what the, the skills that I like and so he took a look at it and he started to take classes in those uh in that course in that coursework and so the the third time i met him that's when he showed me he had already improved his skills by so much mm. um in the area that i was um interested in and on top of that he has his areas that he's interested in so he did he does jata which we have never heard of um and sports rhythm so some of the uh, and he does functional um, uh, FMS, mm. and it's of course that we know we are familiar with, but we don't practice it in the clinic. So mm. I thought all of these skills were very um, complementary to our clinic. Uh, yeah. That and most and some of it I've never heard before. And his approaches are a little bit different, just because sometimes we co-treat together. Um, mm. And I enjoy that co-treat because he's got he's got ideas coming from uh, from a very different place I've never seen. So that that that, that is what I like about working with him actually, mm. skill sets wise and on a personality wise. Yeah. Um, of course, the Japanese culture in him is very strong. Um, mm. He's got very strong work ethics. This is the man who's going to show up exactly mm. on time, and he will not leave until the boss leaves. <laughs> and you know so he's got some really good traits and even though we're in the covid we're in covid lockdown right now yeah i don't really need to call him to find out what he's doing because i know he's doing something and he's he's constantly thinking of how to improve things and how to work things differently so i i trust him wow thank you mm -hmm. that was a good compliment <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Your work ethic skill set and you can trust him and willing to learn. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, did, so, so that's the kind of like a, that part is that impressed you and you find like a difference from the like physiotherapist in Singapore, other physiotherapist in Singapore. Is there anything that you learn, new things that you learn from him about the physio? Um, yeah, so basically like the sports rhythm was at first a very okay. interesting concept to me. Um, and he explained it in a way um, uh, that you, you know, basically with sports rhythm, it's not just proprioception. It's also um, the, you know, how in, for example, in Japanese culture, uh, soccer is very different from if a Brazilian picked up a soccer ball because in their culture is embedded in them that speed, that, that their dance is a bit culture there. And so their mm. speed work is better. So there's a rhythm that's a hardware in them where some people don't have, and that's something to cultivate. So some, yeah. that was a very interesting thing for me that Taka taught us. Um, and also he, the way he trains for, uh, trains the runners uh, okay. I find that quite interesting. Some of the movements he's introduced, he's very into movement, um, movement um, as a way to do therapy. Um, and I find that very interesting also. Okay. So that's the new things. That, that, that's yes. cool. And uh, what you, are you looking for, uh, you know, like to, for him to include or anything that, <laughs> Uh, for him yeah, himself, to, yeah, yeah, or for yeah. me to um, so basically, when I first hired Taka, he really reminded me a little bit of who I was when I was younger, okay. and um, so when I hired him, I had uh, grand plans, of course, for someone who's ambitious. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted him to take on bigger responsibilities uh, in the future, hopefully in line with what he's always been interested with. Um, I did consider having a Japanese clinic. Uh, and of course, 
to do a Japanese clinic, you'll probably need a Japanese with you. Um, yeah. So that I did consider all of these options, but sometimes, you know, um, things take a different turn. So I, I wanted to keep an open mind having Taka with me. Yeah. Um, but the key thing is I need some, you know, I need to build that team and he is definitely essential to that team uh, of very, very hungry uh, physios who are, who wants to teach, who wants to learn, um, and who wants to take the profession to another level. Um, so that's, that's what I want for him, actually. And okay. um, hopefully, in time, we can spread our wings a little, a little wider even and take on some teaching, of, teaching task overseas mm -hmm. even, uh, starting wow. from a very small clinic. Wow, so teaching overseas. That would be a nice thing. I know Taka likes to travel. I do uh, yeah. too. <laughs> I, I do, except I have three kids. But in order to keep Taka happy, I have to be on my toes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, that that's cool. Um, and so, what would you know? Like, of course, um, Taka is that you know, like a, the treating of some patient in Singapore, or the Japanese, also like Singapore or Singaporean as well. Uh, mm -hmm. What kind of patient would you recommend uh, to you know, like for, for him to treat kind of stuff. Any specific condition that, that this kind of a condition, I would recommend him or something. Uh, I see. So currently I've been um, sending all the runners to him. Okay, uh, runners, yep. Athletics, any athletic yep. injuries, uh, they go to see him. Also, um, there, also, the patients that, because we've done some co-treats together, I've noticed that the patients that really like him are also the ones mm. who require uh, an extra skill in um, chronic pain medicine. So basically, okay. Taka also does very well with, um, I've done some, you know, maybe let's back up a little bit. I've done some work in um, visceral manipulation mm. and um, of, while studying in visceral manipulation work, uh, VM5, which is the fifth um, class, talks a, a little bit about uh, emotional part, uh, our emotions contributing to chronic pain. I think Taka yeah. does a pretty good job with yeah. uh, those patients. Um, initially, I had thought to channel all the Japanese patients to him, but I also mm. see that the English speaking patients t um, liking him very much. Mm. Um, I have not received any complaints about, you know, either difference in culture or difference in language or anything like this, because I think what's universal is the way you present to a patient, how much you care about their, their um, well-being. So I think um, Taka, Taka is able to um, show that pretty well in clinic. Um, so patients, are, patients also like the fact that um, he's very meticulous and careful. Mm. Um, you know, and sometimes I wonder, is, is all Japanese all Japanese guys like this is is it all like this because is this just Taka or is it the Japanese culture I that's something uh, I maybe <laughs> <laughs> that's a tough question but uh now I would say because uh, that's for uh, only Taka yeah <laughs> that's not the Japanese culture yeah no <laughs> because of him no yeah, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> It's very well, he's very well received here. I think in general, also Singaporeans do like Japanese people. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that that's good. So uh, not only Japanese, but like a Singaporean English speaking, like a patient who has, who interested in running and also chronic pain kind of stuff. Uh, if you know, like someone looking for some uh, physios, Taka would be the, the therapist. To yes. Go to. Yeah, perfect. I have the one question that, that I received before, and that question is just that like, I'm going to ask you because I'm asking you lots of the questions, so I'm just going to get the Bye. one more question done. <laughs> uh, so, um, how long did you uh, did you think that Tak could get used to the practicing in your clinic when you decided to hire him? So, because yeah. of how motivated and how mm -hmm. focused and uh, goal directed Taka is. In my mind, it was three months. You know, for okay. us um, as an employer, we want yeah. our therapist to be um, to actually see a full load of patients and still be able to do some education and whatnot. Mm. Um, 
I would say uh, from the standpoint of hiring a Singaporean physio uh, coming okay. out of like n haven't been in private practice before. Usually I uh, imagine that their, their schedule will start to fill up at about two months okay. for someone very motivated. Um, we, and um, with, with Taka, unfortunately, mm. the moment he joined us within like weeks, we had the COVID started. Okay. So he was very affected by that. However, okay. um, had it not been the way he is, um, if it were somebody else, I think it would be way worse. But because mm. Taka is, is not somebody who, who lets negative things get to him, he kept going and pushing forward. So he, has, um, he hasn't um, seen his full load, but actually he's doing, he's doing well for somebody um, in the COVID uh, times. So it's a bit hard to gauge at the moment, but I'd say usually about two mm. to three months is where I see a, a physio starting to mm. gain some confidence in working in our clinic. All right, two to three months. Mm. Yeah. All right, thank you so much. And I'm going to ask you some question to Taka too. Awesome. <laughs> okay. And I'm going, to, I'm going to ask some question as well later on. Um, so okay. Taka, uh, yeah. why did you choose to work in Singapore? Oh, big question. Many people asked me. Actually, there are so many reasons. I really like Singapore. It is very convenient, modern, and clean and warm, and there are a lot of green in this city, and it's very diverse. However, if I have to choose a main reason, it was because I met Brenda here. So before meeting her, I had no idea to work here. Then, when I saw, when I visited and when I saw her practice, I realized uh, she is my ideal as a, she's one of my ideal physiotherapists. She can do manual techniques very well. She can teach exercise based on Pilates. Then she supports national athletes. And I like her attitude. Her attitude is very professional. I think a USA education is um, good, very good. So then, so this, that's why if I work with her, I can improve my professional skills. Then what I like her the most is she's still keen to learn new things. So that's why I, I work keeping persistence to get the opportunity with her. Yeah. Oh, that, that's amazing. That's <laughs> amaz amazing, uh, the boss that you have. Uh, I so, am very lucky, yeah. Yeah, and another question is, what are the differences that you, you found? Uh, of course, you, work, you worked in, in Japan yes. as a physio. And yeah. now you're working in, in Singapore now. Uh, yeah. What's the difference that you found as a clinician? As a clinician? Yeah. The main difference between working in Singapore and in Japan as a therapist is that I have more, more autonomy here. It means I have more responsibility like making a diagnosis or making a treatment plan, unlike in Japan. In Japan, we need to get approval from the doctor first. So, uh, it makes me more motivated. And in addition, I also take care of my own marketing plan here in Singapore because I'm working at a private clinic. And this is a very, very tough part, but I really like to challenge this. Mm. Yes. Yeah, that is, uh, I think that's the, one of the, the big difference is making you need to make a decision or PT diagnosis kind of yeah. stuff. Uh, whereas in Japan is like a, is a doctor will do. 
Uh, I've never worked in Japan, so I cannot say from like, the Japanese <laughs> point of point. But uh, like that's what I had. Uh, so, uh, so you you found those uh, big difference, uh, main difference. But how about the culture? In terms of culture, uh, what's the cultural difference that you you learn, and how it affect uh, as a person uh, as, and as also as a clinician? I see. Good question. Um, yeah. What I learned here is um, to accept the difference. It means um, Singapore culture is much more diverse than Japanese, uh, Japan, Japanese culture because there are so many kinds of people like Chinese, Malay, and Ind Indians, and other Western people. So, so we can see, um, let, me, uh, let me think. And for example, uh, in Singapore, there are national holidays for Chinese, for Malay, for Indians. <laughs> <laughs> it is very, uh, it is amazing to me. <laughs> we never work. It's just a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Good so, country to work. Pardon? Good country to work. <laughs> yeah, very nice. And as far as I experienced, in Singapore people is the kindest people to foreigners regarding English. So they know, uh, they know they are, uh, they know we are different from each other. Then, of, then if uh, when I came here for the first time, I was. Mm, my English was not good enough. And when I so when I had the difficulty to explain in English, all Singaporean uh, listened to me very carefully and helped me. So and I this is a very good, very good culture. Then uh, so let me think. Let me summarize. Anyway, uh, Singapore is a very kind country and kind culture to foreigners. Then I learned from this country. I, um, I, I don't know, this culture made me more open-minded to other cultures, mm -hmm. which is very important as a person and as a clinician. Mm. Yeah, that's totally 100% uh, ugly. Um, so uh, what is uh, your, the biggest challenge now? Now? Uh, uh, yeah, or, yeah, as a clinician uh, working in Singapore, what is your biggest challenge or any obstacles that you have? The biggest face, challenge? Right? Yeah. There are many challenges. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what's that? Uh, the biggest challenge is to yeah understand English. It's English. <laughs> <laughs> it's very difficult. Uh, <laughs> English is a language, a uh, kind yeah. of combination between English and Chinese. Mm. Uh, when I Singaporean talk to me, they try to use English. That's why I can understand so far. <laughs> yeah. But if but when they Singaporean talk with each other, they suddenly use English. Mm. So sometimes it, it's true. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> even though in our clinic, mm. <laughs> most of the staff are Singaporean. Yeah. Sometimes it sounds, it sounds like totally Chinese. Mm. Yeah. However, I want to learn, I want to understand the English because I want to learn local culture more and I want to get along with uh, local people. Yeah. I, I want to... English is not a good thing to learn. It's, it's broken English, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
But, but he'll he'll be like the in the in in the in in the no if he knows. Yeah. <laughs> so, so sometimes in the meeting we have to stop and say because he's so quiet yeah. and it was like, yeah. Tata, do you understand what we were saying? Because sometimes he doesn't understand. We had to repeat it, but slowly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I get it uh, because, of course, I spent the island, um, the, uh, I went to school in, in Quebec City, yeah. in oh, here. Cool. Quebec nice. City speaks, yeah, uh, the people speak the French and the English yeah. as well. So they mix the, those things. So I can mm. totally relate to uh, you know, some, <laughs> some, you know, like the things that the, the Taka is experiencing now. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, Taka, is, uh, I have the one more question. Uh, what is uh, your goal or, you know, the, as, a, as a physio working in, the, in, in Singapore, what do you want to bring to the table, uh, you know, like, as, a, as a physio? So, um, what do you want to contribute? Uh, uh, so, uh, should I answer my goal? Uh, what yeah, you, you, what, what do you want to do uh, from now? You know, like, what do you want to achieve? Okay, so yeah. I have one goal. Yeah, I said that it is I want to open my own clinic. Mm. So and it is because I think it is the necessary step to improve my professional skills, and I want to contribute more people mm. to manage the clinic. I believe, I believe it gives me the wider view as a clinician. Okay. Yeah. Then, Good. yes, then, let me think. Then I want to become a bridge between Singapore mm. and so, so, Belinda answered, uh, there is another Japanese physio in Singapore, but uh, he's, I, as far as I know, he studied in the UK. Hmm. So I am only the physio uh, who, uh, who knows the physical, therapist, physical therapy and the medicine in Japan. Hmm. I realized each country has each strong point, strong point. For example, Singapore is a very open country. So they import the latest knowledge and skills from Western countries like USA, the UK, Australia. Then they cooperate and they co incorporate, incorporate them well. On the other hand, Japan, Japanese physiotherapists, most, um, let me think, Japanese physiotherapists are very good at developing improving their skills and knowledge by themselves. Actually, I know very good therapists in Japan. Mm. If it's, yeah, in Japan, then I want to bring their knowledge and skills mm. uh, to bring uh, to Singapore and vice versa. Mm. So bring that knowledge from Japan and also vice versa knowledge yes. um, between. And what area are you interested in? Uh, kind of like a, to treat the patient, what kind of area is your, your strength or your, are you interested in? I see. Basically, yeah. I'm very interested in uh, physical person. Okay. So I like to see musculoskeletal and the okay. sport. Okay. Especially, I like I I like to see running athletes. Running athletes. Okay. Athletes. Athletes. Running oh, athletes. Because I was, I am also runners. Okay. So athlete, as the Belinda said, the runners see yeah. Taka now. If you have pain, yes, that's that's is good. Um, so, um, a last question for both, and I'm going to open to the, the uh, I think like a, to everyone uh, who is, you know, like a, watching this interviews. 
so last question is what's your vision uh, or ho what do you hope to achieve in, in Singapore now? So may, maybe like a faster uh, Belinda, what's your vision like uh, working with Taka? And yeah. So the first, of course, there's probably in there many steps to this vision. Okay. Um, I think the first step is to first um, be able to serve the Japanese athletic population. Um, we do have um, uh, a group of Japanese in Singapore, and I find that a lot of them are very serious with their sports. Um, mm. I play tennis, so I'm most familiar with tennis, and mm. I've heard that the Japanese tennis players are killers. They're really, really good <laughs> at their tennis, and uh, they are super serious. And um, so I like working with people like that, motivated mm. and uh, goal-directed. <clears throat> so I was hoping to bring some of these athletes into the clinic through Taka. Okay. Okay. Um, and uh, so that would be my first, first, uh, the first step, first simple goal. And then, of course, um, I think what I also did mention is that uh, if, if this becomes the right sort of uh, – uh, partnership or um, association. I like to have Taka also do more teaching while he's here and hopefully be able to um, help the in in help spread his knowledge to the physiotherapists in Singapore as well as um, on the other hand, what I hope for is maybe have a Japanese clinic that sees also local. So right okay. now, Japanese clinics are very strict on um, seeing only Japanese people, um, and I like some. I like a place that is more casual in the sense that it's more mixed. Um, I don't know if that's the feeling you get, Daka, when you go to the Japanese clinics in Singapore. It's very, very. Um, I find it intimidating mm -hmm. to walk in there. Um, uh, it doesn't have. It's also very formal. And um, doesn't doesn't exude sports if you ask me because sports is always uh, very informal and um, uh, a very different culture. So I hope to create a different culture, a different culture in another clinic that has uh, that provides these uh, services to Japanese as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. How about a, how about a Taka? Do you have any? Like a vision of what do you want to achieve, what do you want to what do you want to do in the clinic uh, in Singapore? In Singapore, yeah. Yes. Actually, what I want, what I want to achieve is very similar to Belinda. Hmm. Yes. Then, so I have already answered. I hmm. want to have my own clinic. But I want to keep cooperating co to cooperate with Belinda yeah, to improve our knowledge to help people. Mm. What I want to achieve here? Mm. Yeah, this is what I want to achieve. Mm. Then if I, if I see long vision, long vision, big vision. Mm. I want to I want to share our knowledge and skills with uh, people in developed countries. Before before deciding to come here, I visited many countries, including uh, developing countries like Kyrgyzstan and Sri Lanka, Cambodia, and they are very. Mm, yeah, I, I, I realized people are the same, but uh, the environment is very different. Mm. Yeah, I, I thought it is unfair. Mm. So if I was born in developing countries, I don't have opportunity to learn I don't end up work like 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 now. So now I'm very happy to work with Belinda. Then mm. I really like my job. Then I want to share my yeah. That's why I want to share this good stuff with um, 
some people. Oh, that that's good. It's uh, you guys the same vision that you have. You guys have so. Um, now I would like to open up some questions. Is Belinda okay? Yeah, sure. Okay, perfect. If anyone uh, who has a question, uh, you can uh, come on the video or you can uh, do the, uh, a mute uh, by clicking the like uh, I think the left uh, bottom corner of the, the 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 some little picture of the mic. Uh, so if anyone interested in or do anyone has uh, the questions, you can more than happy you're more than happy to come on. Anyone? They have questions or uh, もし uh, 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 I'm Kohei, uh, who is a uh, um, DPT course student in California, Loma Linda University. Maybe you might have heard Loma Linda City, which is a really yeah, small city in California. And then I'm a um, physical therapist, not only in Japan, but also I got a license in New York recently. Oh, and very I nice. Believe, yeah, I believe that you graduated from Columbia University, so you had stayed in New York. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and uh, I'll attend uh, the Pittsburgh University after uh, I graduated from this DPT course to take master Kitaro special course, specific course. And then maybe I'll be hired in New York uh, uh, as a physical therapist. Yes. Very nice. Yeah, and then I want to ask you one thing that uh, mm -hmm. you hire Takara. And then I'm uh, not only the clinician, but also I'm a translator and also interpreting the not only book, but also lectures sometimes. So in this case, maybe I can contribute to have a Japanese clients, not only Americans. So in this uh, case, uh, what do you think about uh, like, how can I say, benefit to hire Japanese for like language aspect? What do you think about it? As in hiring a uh, Japanese based on the ability to speak Japanese? Yeah, Is yeah, that yeah. In Singapore? Yeah. In Singapore, I, yes. Uh, also, yeah, in the US also. So definitely, I think, of course, with Daka, um, I, was I was actually hiring him based on just Japanese. I didn't mm -hmm. think that he would be seeing our English-speaking patients. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for sure. I, the only thing is that um, at this point, we're also testing the market a little bit to mm -hmm. see uh -huh. and um, to see if there's enough Japanese uh, patients to 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 actually fill up his schedule or get a whole mm. team of clinicians Japanese speaking, I'd say mm. most Japanese prefer to follow a Japanese speaking um, clinician uh -huh. over mm -hmm. here. I think I think the camaraderie with the Japanese people is very strong. Mm -hmm. um, but right now, uh, because we're testing the market, it was good that Taka actually mm. speaks some English because mm -hmm. um, I think we. Definitely see him seeing fifty. Is it fifty fifty Taka right now? Mm -hmm. uh, only thirty percent oh. Japanese. Ah. Oh. Uh -huh. well, otherwise, Singaporean good. Western people. And I think it's uh -huh. partly also how we're gonna figure out how to market these patients uh, mm -hmm. to Japanese people. The one mm -hmm. thing that um, very um, unusual um, that Taka had brought up is that Japanese have different insurance plans here mm -hmm. than the local mm -hmm. people. Uh -huh which is yeah. also what affects their, their um, willingness to mm -hmm. do physiotherapy. Um, mm -hmm. So I think to, in order to just hire, just for Japanese speaking, we mm -hmm. haven't actually reached out far enough to the market. Um, mm -hmm. Also, I think we, we are now noticing a bit of roadblock and obstacles with insurance, mm -hmm. for example. Oh, okay. um, mm -hmm. So we're trying to cater a little bit. Me and Taka, we're trying to figure out different ideas, how to tweak this marketing. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, with COVID, it's, it's definitely mm -hmm. thrown a wrench uh, yeah. on everything. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I think probably yeah. by the end of the year, it will be even easier for <clears throat> us to see then, how can we bring in a fully Japanese-speaking um, mm -hmm. clinic or pay, uh, 
physio on board. Is that, mm. does, that does that answer your question? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, because maybe it, maybe op, um, maybe it's different from New York situation. Maybe in New York, many Japanese have really good insurance there. So maybe, yeah, if I had really a uh, good Japanese ability, but also English ability. So in this case, if I can have a many Japanese there, it's really good for like clinic who would like to have Japanese um, patients who have really good insurance in New York. Yeah, actually yeah. also the other thing what I talked to Taka about is the Japanese, the culture wise, mm. physiotherapy is they don't pay cash to see mm. a physiotherapist. So mm -hmm. I think um, uh, that is something I had to find out uh, from having Taka here. I had no mm -hmm. idea that it wasn't something that people would, you know, just willingly put, pay a cash down to actually see mm -hmm. it. Because my mm -hmm. clinic is a cash only clinic. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, if they need to um, get insurance to help cover for them, they have to get that sorted themselves. Um, mm -hmm. But otherwise, I think it makes some of the Japanese people a little uncomfortable. Am I right to say, Taka? Uh, yeah, I, I think Taka <laughs> lost me. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank um, you so much. Thank no you. No problem. All right. Anyone else? Uh, anyone that has uh, any questions? Uh, if you're not, um, I'm going to have the one question. So this is not uh, for your clinic or Taka, um, but if you would uh, give the advice to the, any like, you know, Japanese physiotherapist uh, who wants to go outside the Japan, so Singapore or States, what kind of skill set do you think that they should improve or in order to get the job in overseas? So overseas, like <laughs> yeah, any, yeah, anywhere, right? Anywhere um, or maybe may, like a Singapore, maybe like a, your with your experience, or so Singapore yeah. or or you know, stay, yeah. I did consider moving to Australia, um, yeah. and uh, from with uh, of course I'm American licensed, um, okay. and I think most important to me is is for me is. The boss I'm working with because um, and it doesn't matter it transcends it really doesn't matter what what kind of um, environment as long as, as long as there's MSK uh, sports uh, location I find that um, it's as long as you have some manual therapy as some ex, um, and, and good with exercise prescription I think most places in this world can accommodate a therapist mm. like that um, but so in terms of professional skill sets, that would be my, my, my take. But when it comes to, I think, um, when it comes to uh, just moving to a different country, and of course I've moved several times, I think one will have to have a very open mind um, in terms of accepting cultures. And I think I can see for myself watching Taka go through um, Singapore culture. Uh, sometimes I wonder if he needs me to deliver a bowl of udon because I wonder <laughs> if he misses home. <laughs> and and um, because I I do get that way, so I think it's important to network or to, and he does a really good job with that to network and to meet people also from his circle uh, as well as mix around with people out of his circle. I think that keeps a more balanced, um, a balanced uh, life. Uh, but I do think that if a person isn't very um, goal oriented, they would easily give up on this venture, a venture. Okay. Um, because it comes with missing family and, you know, mm. feeling lonely. And I just, so in, in the personal aspect, I think these are traits to have. Okay, good. Thank you so much. Um, that was the question that I received. So is there any qu other questions that the other people I have? A have? Question my friend, can I ask Belinda? Yes. Yeah, my friend uh, told me the questions before this session. So, 
uh, before you met Taka, how much were you interested in Japan or Japanese culture? Generally speaking, what do you think of the characteristics of people who came from Japan? Mm, okay, so, uh, so I'll back up a little bit in my history. I actually lived in Los Angeles for a year and that's where I first started in America. Um, I lived in a dorm at UCLA campus and I, my only friends were Japanese. Mm -hmm. And because of that, they, they sometimes forget I am Chinese. Um, and they would just speak in Japanese. So I soon have to learn Japanese really quickly um, <laughs> because they forget that I'm Chinese. So I have to, sometimes I have to speak to them in Japanese and um, I will listen to all their stories in Japanese. So I think from there also, I made some of the closest and my best friends were Japanese people whom I still keep in touch with. Um, so I, I, and I think most of them I met at work also because we work in the dorm, in the kitchen, doing like um, giving out food and washing dishes. I find that, um, you know, maybe this is just from my experience in, in that in LA, but I find that they're very um, hardworking, very industrious people. Um, I don't see them complaining about anything um, to begin with. So once given the task, they'll do it. Um, and that's always been um, something that I've noticed in the Japanese friends I have. Um, also, I enjoy, I enjoy Japanese food very much. I enjoy the language. Um, so I think when I moved back to Singapore, I actually visited Japan maybe, now I've been back for eight years now. I've been to Japan maybe three times. Um, and I enjoy it every single time is also to meet my friends uh, who are still living there. Um, and I think in general, where, wherever Taka went, all, all the Singaporean people he's met probably want to talk about Japan. I think it's just very well liked uh, country um, in Singapore. Singaporeans love to visit Japan um, in general. And I would say that would be that would be same with me. Yeah. Did Thank I you. answer it? Yes, I think so. Yeah. I have one more question. Yes. Uh, is someone asked me just send me. Uh, what is the what's the attractive part of being the physiotherapist? <laughs> so, what's the you, did you get it? Is it a, yeah. what's the attractiveness of the being physiotherapist? Just being a physio. Yeah, just as a physio, yeah. Okay. Uh, Taka, should I answer first? Let me answer first. Yeah. yeah okay, people, people always ask me why I want to be a physio. Yeah. Uh, the great thing is I don't have to, you know, I, I, I don't have to see blood in a, in a sports clinic. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I can make my schedule. I can say I start at nine, I finish at five. And if I want to take a holiday to Japan, I might work eight to eight, you know, so I can really shift things around. And I'm a mother of three. So sometimes I may have to take off to go see, take my kids to the doctor. So I can also change my timings a little bit and still be able to fit people in on a Saturday or something. Um, so it's very flexible. It suits my lifestyle. I can do my sports in the morning before I get into clinic. Um, so it, it keeps me honest with my sports and my health. So wellness is a, a big thing for me and I try to balance both work and the sports. Um, and I think that, so I, I'm able to do that as a physiotherapist. Um, you know, I actually didn't like Pilates to begin with. I forced mm. myself to do it mm -hmm. and I fell in love with it later, but I did that to make sure that I keep strong so that I can keep treating. Um, mm. So it's given me some really good um, skills as well as a person. And I think that one of the biggest thing for me as a physio is that I see patients and people of all walks of life and I hear all their stories. So I try to learn from their stories and try to get courage from, from their motivation also. So I, I, I've got to be the most chicken um, um, therapist. Like I can tell people, don't be afraid of surgery or don't be afraid of the pain. I'm the worst with that. And I, get, I tend to be able to draw that uh, good energy from my patients when they are so brave and 
they are persistent with coming in to do their therapy and sometimes when it's very tough for them. So I think I get to learn a lot. I get to pick and choose good traits from my patients and most of them come in motivated. Good. That's, an, that's nice. How about Taka? Yeah. Um, okay, let me think. I, I really like my job because we can see the improvement of patients and we can see, usually we can, we can see the smile after physiotherapy. So, and this is very good, very good point. Work, as working, uh, very good point. Then, I, when I was a student, I, I was thinking whether I want to be a doctor or a physiotherapist. Basically, I wanted to help people, uh, athletes who suffer from injury because I was the one who suffered from the serious low back injuries when I was a junior, junior high school student. Then the reason why I chose physiotherapist is we have more time. We, we can spend more time with patients and athletes. And we can see, we can communicate. Mm, let me think, let me think. Yeah, for me, uh, this is very, uh, it, for me, I can enjoy my job because of this. I agree. I, I would yeah. be the same. Uh, it's, it's the notes that they leave us and the, the little uh, muffins that they make us uh, to show their gratitude um, uh, always keeps me, keeps me happy. I'd say 99.9% .9 of the time we have, we yeah. meet patients that are very nice um, and uh, makes us feel better about what we do also. Yeah. Thank you. That yeah, that's great. Uh, amazing. So I know you guys have, uh, you know, uh, Belinda has uh, another appointment, I think. Like, uh, uh, so we need to finish the, you know, like this uh, interview, so this session uh, the, on time. So we have uh, two <laughs> minutes left. Only two <laughs> minutes. Uh, is there anyone who, oh. Uh, Hi. One, nice to meet you guys. Uh, um, my name is Jyuta. Hi. Yes, I can. Um, okay, so Belinda, let me ask you a quick question. Um, do you think that there are other um, clinics that would be interested in hiring Japanese physios in Singapore? That's a really good yeah. question. I can tell you to get the employment pass, which is a foreign, like a, to employ foreigners, is getting harder and harder in Singapore because they're trying to protect the physiotherapists here and. Our, we have a physiotherapist school that just started and they're graduating this in the next few months. So we're gonna start seeing an influx of new therapists coming through and each class is about 100 people. And mm -hmm. Singapore not being a very big country, it'll start to, um, hopefully it'll start to meet the demands because right now um, physiotherapists is a great shortage. But would you come with a very strong skill set or I think with, with Daka, for example, um, I think what was the uh, the what was what what made me decide to hire him was more uh, this his personality. I know that skill sets as long as you have a strong foundation, you can always build it up. Um, so I think otherwise with with applying for the EP, which is what we call the employment pass, uh, we I that can take months and it's quite um, and they made sure that the therapist coming in has to be paid well. So um, if we really in Singapore need someone with such a good, like um, such a good, um, I'd say uh, strong skills and whatnot, then they want us to be able to pay this person to come in. So mm -hmm. it is not cheap to hire an, a foreigner, um, but there are clinics that will be open to doing that. We have other clinics. Most other clinics hire like people from um, 
Ireland, UK is very common. We, uh, a lot of therapists come from Australia and the UK. I don't see a lot of American therapists here. Um, so mostly UK, Australia, New Zealand, and not, not a lot from Japan. I, I, I'm not sure if, it's, uh, if, if that's because of language or not. Uh, that's something I'm not sure, but I can tell you that uh, it seems to be that it looks like there are clinics they're opening up for Japanese people only. So it will, I, what I believe, it'll come a time that they'll see that there's, there's going to be a market for it and they'll want to bring people in. Thank you. Yeah, good yeah. to hear. Yeah, I personally yeah. Got, a, uh, got a job offer from my employer in Canada. Like, Oh, like, wow. Yeah, so, yeah, but I just found that there are so many young physiotherapists and students who are interested in working in a different country in Japan, so just wanted to know the situation. But yeah, yeah. good to hear. Only, when I was looking for Japanese um, therapists, I found it a little bit of a struggle. Um, the only lead I have was I had a, um, I had a inter an intern when I was uh, working in California um, she's from Fukuoka and she's Japanese, but she's now gone back to and now living in Kobe. Um, and I keep in touch with her and she was my only lead because um, she then sent, uh, sent to all her friends to find out who's keen. But I'm, the thing is a lot of Japanese people are also quite happy living in Japan. Um, so I don't know if it's easy enough to attract, um, you know, the right person to come through. Yeah. Okay, yeah, thank you. No worries. Thank you so much, Yamasan. Thank you. Uh, so, um, thank you so much, uh, Belinda and uh, Taka. Uh, thank you. I uh, really appreciate uh, for your time and uh, the answer to all, all the questions. Um, so, let's say thank you very much. So, uh, yeah, uh, we're going to end this uh, interview session, but once again, thank you so much. And you do you have that any? Yeah. Thank you. And do, if anyone who is interested in, uh, you know, like a book an appointment with a taco or anything, how, how do they contact you guys? Just to like at the end, like a uh, contact the info. We have a Facebook page um, okay. and have our office number. We have a WhatsApp number um, okay. that we can, uh, that you can contact. Um, I have to make sure that that's uh, updated exactly on okay. our web page also. So that's how you would do that. Or you can do an email to um, email to front desk at performance.com.sg, which is our, our main off clinic email okay. um, that should be available on our website as well. Okay. So either WhatsApp uh, number WhatsApp or email. Be yeah. WhatsApp yeah. will be or Facebook kind of stuff. Yes. Uh, I believe that uh, the other guy, you know, like a MSD who organized the MSD this uh, uh, seminar will send yes. some email to the like, participant as well and put the, like, uh, some contact info on the, on the website as well. So anyone who is in, interested in, you know, like uh, book some uh, sessions with Taka or you, uh, able to contact you guys. Awesome. So, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Have a great day. It was fun. Thank you. Nice to meet Thanks. you. Bye. Nice to meet you. Everybody, thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. See you next time. See you next time. Okay. I better go teach my Pilates. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. See you next time.